So normally when you miss class, I will show you a PowerPoint to try to feature the main parts of class. Quite honestly, this would take two time because this lesson is a two, three day long lesson. So instead of giving you the main points, I'm going to navigate you through it. So you miss class. We're on chapter four, Bill of Rights and Civil Liberties. I click on this and you will see five rectangles. Let me share with you the order of how we did things. First thing we did is we watched this short but very interesting video and uh, created a lot of good conversation in class. So if you're at home, feel free to watch it. Talk to a brother, sister, parent, dog, wall, yourself, or you can just think about it. But it's a good opening, so check that out. From the video, we went to this PowerPoint. This PowerPoint is lengthy, but it's understandable. Not a lot of e explanation required on my end. Now, this rectangle here is just a transcript of the Bill of Rights as a reference, okay? So you don't have to do anything with this except refer to it when you need it, okay? So one, two, reference. Four is the assignment. Now, there are 20 questions here. They are not for amateurs, okay? Eat your Wheaties. This is a college-level class, and this is going to test you a little bit. I'm not going to go over the answers to all 20 of these. However, I'm going to point out some terms you might not be familiar with or you need to be reminded of. Word number one is precedent. You're going to see that quite a few times in here. A precedent, precedent, excuse me, is when those nine Supreme Court justices say, this is how it is. Now, that judgment affects 370 million people. Very, very powerful tool. Uh, another thing you're going to be noticing are the Supreme Court cases have parentheses after them. I need you to do that anytime you write down a Supreme Court case. That is just customary. You put the year. And that's going to determine a precedent. Another thing I'm going to be asking you to look at in these is looking at these rulings and connecting it to a part of the Constitution. That's what the Supreme Court does. And um, most of this, if not all of this, is in the PowerPoint. So if you work that way, you can print this paper out look at the PowerPoint and do your thing from there and return it when you get back. Now, the final thing, I hope you're back for this. This is, in my opinion, the most interesting part of the class. We're going to look at the Bill of Rights and see how it could be revised or should be revised. This is not going to be a black and white thing, I hope. I hope there's some debate. I hope people don't see it the same way and that we can work out our differences. Hopefully that reminds you of the Federalist, Anti-Federalist, but bear in mind the Bill of Rights, that was written a really long time ago. In modern times, do we need to tweak it up or not? Are some good, some not? So that's what we're doing. So one more time, if you missed class, please watch this video, then go through this PowerPoint. If I could make a suggestion, I would print this out. As you look at the PowerPoint, use this as a reference. And if you don't get back in time, please do this yourself. Think about the Bill of Rights and what could be added, what could be deleted, or should we keep it as is? Is it perfect as it is? Has it lasted 200 plus years in its original form? That's the more critical thinking part. Think for yourself. Don't be a robot. Don't be a puppet. Think for yourself and feel free to express your opinion. Bearing in mind, not everybody's going to agree with it, but that's okay. That's the root of government. We don't exactly agree, and hopefully we reach a compromise. That's the way it ought to be. I'm not saying that's the way it is now, but it's the way it ought to be. Those two things seldom meet, I have found, but you get that, okay? So I look forward to seeing you get back, and um, good luck with this.